Hey, it's Cody. I'm here with my books and decks that I'm going to be working with uh, for the month of June. I almost said May, damn. Um, I feel like I kind of have a lot of shit and a lot of things I want to say, so um, I don't know. I'm trying to decide between hurrying or just letting this video be really fucking long. <laughs> I'll kind of try and do both. Okay, um, so you know I always start with books. Um, in case you don't give a shit about this part, it's easy to just, you know, go past. Um, I have a couple books oops, that I finished this last month uh, in May, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Um, I was actually really surprised um, by how much I ended up liking this book. Um, usually fairy books are just, I want there to be like a good fantasy fiction fairy book, but a lot of times they're just so, I don't know, man. Anyway, I do like this. Um... There was like a love story, but it wasn't like a two in your face, which is kind of something that I look for in books because I don't enjoy reading love stories, so. Oh, shit. All right, another book. Oh my god, there's like a fucking mosquito flying around in here, I think. Uh, the other book that I finished in the month of May was Son of the Storm. Um, this book I had seen and then couldn't find again. I think I remembered the cover different. Um, but I ended up finally finding it and then stalling for a couple months before reading it. <laughs> um, I actually, I really like this book too. Um, yeah. Get that out of here. Okay, here is a witchcrafty one. All right, so, uh, in my, uh, May Dex and Books video, I believe that I mentioned this, uh, Protection and Reversal Magic by Jason Miller. Um, I said I was going to read it. I have gotten this far okay so <laughs> this book is okay this is like a revised edition sort of um so there's like there will be like a chapter and then a little bit of like things that um the author would have changed so it, it that's kind of a weird format for a book like I, God, I think I'm only on like chapter three. Yeah, I'm literally on chapter three. So on chapter, I, I don't remember if it was, yeah, I think it was chapter two. It goes into all this stuff. And then at the very end of it, he's like, well, I wouldn't recommend doing all that shit now. I'm like, why did I just fucking read that? Um, but the, the first thing that set me off kind of was the, there's like a, a preface and a, um, like an intro to the new edition. And it, it's just whiny. Like, not that I necessarily disagree with the things that he's saying, but he's like, oh, well, he he says that it's his responsibility that he thinks that he's the one that made everyone in, like, witchcrafty kind of spaces afraid of, like, being attacked psychically. And, like, that's just really... That's a really weird fucking... I can't even think of a fucking word for that. Okay, that's even reasonable. Like, imagine thinking that you're the one that did it. And he's like, well, I want to dispel the myth that I fucking created. I'm like, um, okay. And then whining about, like, witchcraft community isn't what it used to be and shit. Like, I, I'm not disagreeing with that, but just, I don't know, man. The whiny aspect of it fucking irritated me. So I did kind of put it down. And then chapter two pulled that shit. Um, I... I just, I was excited when I looked through here, it looked like there's some good information, like, before I actually bought it in the store, but now I'm not sure that I really give a shit about it. <sighs> I, am I too picky? Maybe I'm too picky. Okay, there was that. All right. Um, okay. I had debated on whether I was going to do one thing, but I will. Okay, so this is what I'm reading right now. This is The Bone Shard War by Andrea or Andrea or something Stewart. Um, this is the third book in a series called I believe the drowning empire it's like the the bone shard daughter and the bone shard emperor and then the bone shard war it's like 600 something pages I'm excited about the fucking largeness of this thing the book itself even underneath uh the book jacket is purple which is I don't know why I'm so excited about that I feel like I've never had a purple book <laughs> anyway yeah I mean I've kind of been waiting for this one to come out so I did start on this just the other day Okay, so now I have to talk about, all right, let me, let me come out ahead of this and say you're going to cringe, okay, because I'm, I'm cringing too. Okay, I bought this book, so go ahead and cringe out of your skin and then come back and we'll talk. <laughs> 
someone recommended this book to me. I don't remember where. It was a while back. But what had interested me about it is they said that there were goddess, like, all right, there's chapters in here. Okay, perfect. Here's the Temple of Mother Mary. And so it has like a little, I don't know, visionary thing to meet her. Um, and then some information about her, right? Unconditional love and forgiveness, like things that she is kind of known for. And it's kind of about healing um, almost like wounds around femininity, I guess. Femininity. So there's meditations there's just little things in here. And I was like, this, that sounds really cool. Okay, here's Avalon priestesses. Um, there's Isis in here. There's... Uh... I don't know. It just, it seemed fucking cool. So I was like, you know, maybe I'm judging this book by, like, the cover and the cringy-ass name. Um, so I was like, let me, let me try this. Because, okay, I also have the, fuck, Dark Goddess Craft or something by Stephanie Woodfield, maybe? And I feel like it kind of had a very similar... It was like an introduction, and then you sort of meet goddesses in the chapters coming after, and they're there to, you know, teach you lessons, things you can work on. Um, so I was imagining it to be like that. Um, this kind of is, but, okay. Do you see how the title is called You Were a Goddess? I fucking hate that shit. And then inside it, like, the, the writing style is very similar. Well, okay, not very similar, but kind of similar to that. It uses... Uh, language like saying activation or like mm, I come that weird star seedy shit. <laughs> it's it, there's no like other specifically star seed shit, but I don't like fucking words like activation, downloads, transmissions. Like I'm not a fucking computer, and I'm not gonna pretend that for some bullshit. Like I don't know, man. I'm having a hard time with this book. I am part way through. Um, well, quite a bit I'm over half. Um, I have mostly just been skimming there i mean it's true that there are chapters with different goddesses um but it's just not like useful information about them i don't know how else to explain that like maybe if you were a lot newer to knowing about you know different goddesses it might be kind of interesting i mean they're all goddesses that i'm aware of that i know what they do some of them i even kind of have a differing view point than um what she has in here so it's just it's weird maybe I'm just like kind of past the point where this book would have been um useful to me <sighs> I don't know man I don't know so I mean I'll finish it I'm, I mean I'll finish skimming it I'm not gonna like you know really get into it but <sighs> so in my effort okay uh, I'll tell you something weird I've been having this weird, all right, I, I feel like I have, I've had a lot of weird, like, shifts happen, and lately, Aphrodite, Venus, has been, like, I, I feel like she's kind of been on the periphery, which is a weird deity for me, because I'm just not like that, like, <laughs> I don't think I really have, like, a damaged relationship or anything with any of that. Um, and I suspected that she was a goddess that had kind of been simplified, um, more recently. And I was right. The more I looked into it, she's got, uh, epithets that are, like, uh, Aphrodite the Gravedigger, Aphrodite the Dark. Like, there, there's some shit going on under there. I don't know if it's even been forgotten. It's just kind of been pushed to the side because it's easier to be like, she's the goddess of love. So I was like, you know, maybe, okay, that, her sort of appearance to me has kind of got me interested in this shit in the first place. That's even why I got that. Okay, so I was looking through my decks because I know that Aphrodite is pictured in a lot of decks that's just she's a goddess most people know about you know so I was like surely there's one that's kind of reasonable I can you know put on my altar or something so I said to myself I know that I have this uh goddesses gods and guardians oracle cards okay so oh look she's right here on top so I went through and I looked I don't just don't know I understand this is like the famous fucking I don't know this is not how I picture her looking I don't picture her like white with blonde hair i know that there's old ass paintings and shit of her looking like that um i don't know man something about it just feels 
this isn't the energy that I'm getting, maybe, is what I'm trying to say. This is not the energy that I'm getting from the the goddess that I feel like is lurking. Um, but as I went through this deck, I started noticing that if we look in here, we've got... Okay, where is the... Okay, we've got Aphrodite. Okay, no, I just like that one. Excuse me. Okay, you know what? I didn't do that. I thought that I had done this differently. Okay, there's Isis. What I'm trying to say is that all of these goddesses and their temples appear in this deck. And including... I don't... Shit. I... I thought I put this deck so that I had these all right here, but apparently I did not. There's even one, that, there's a Temple of the Avalon Priestesses, um, which, like, I'm aware of, but I've never really seen them, like, used in this way as a goddess, and there, there is one in this deck. So I'm like, that's fucking weird. And then, because I'm, um, fucking stupid, and didn't notice this, um, Sophie Bashford wrote this book, and also did this deck. So I was like, oh my god, it's fucking... It's meant to be, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. That's all just to say that I'm reading this book. I'm not really enjoying it, but also <laughs> some weird Aphrodite shit. Okay, that was, I don't even, I guess I just didn't have anyone else to share that with. Okay, now we're to the decks. The part that probably most people are here for. Okay, the first thing I want to say, fuck, I probably should have started the video with this, but it's too late. I didn't. All right, this is uh, Madam Lydia Wilhelmina's, fuck. Tarot of the m Monsters and the Macabre and Autumn Scenes, I think, but that could be wrong. Okay, this deck comes in and out of print. Um, and what ends up happening is it usually comes out around Samhain, and you can pre-order it, sort of, and then it gets sent out, and then it's gone again for a year. Um, the creator of this deck... Um, she's been having some medical stuff, um, for the summer coming up, I guess there is, she's having a lot of, like, art shows and stuff, um, and so she had posted on her Instagram that she's putting her decks up for pre-order for a little bit, for, like, I think it was posted the day before yesterday, and today is actually June 1st that I'm filming this, um, so she said for the next two weeks, so, you know, two days less than fucking two weeks, right, for the next 12 days, you can pre-order this deck, like, now. Um, so, I will stick the link for that down there, because I know that there's a lot of people who are excited about this deck, and want this deck, and maybe miss it, and I know that two weeks isn't a very long time to get, like, 60 whatever dollars to get this deck, um, but if it's something you can do, and it's something you've been wanting, I thought that I would just share the fact that it it's it's up for pre-order right now. Um, yeah, I'll stick the the link for it down there. So um, I don't necessarily think this is a deck. Okay, well, all right, let me go back. This is a deck that I've sort of been steadily, like, kind of working on or working with for some reason ever since I got it, which was weird. I got this in, like, I think March. Um, and... I don't, I, I, it very much does not have a summery or a springy feel, but I've just been obsessed with it. <laughs> like, I literally will just pull it out and look at it. I love, just, I love so much about this deck. Um, it shuffles really easy for me. It pairs well with a lot of oracles that I have. <sighs> so yeah, I'm sure I'll be pulling this out again, so. All right. That aside. Okay, so, now let's talk about the decks that I have. Fuck. You know what, I'm gonna put this away because I have, like, a little foldy-up sewing machine table thing that my husband's grandma gave me, and I'm doing this on that, and that's, it's, it's small. I don't know why I do this to myself. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, here we have an oracle deck that I'm still going to be working with. And this is the Divine Nature Oracle. That I have a full review up of this. I really, really like this deck. It ha I, I feel like I have been able to use this deck reasonably at pretty much every way that I use a deck. Um, it's... 
it's just been so interesting. I've drawn, you know, for kind of spell work ideas. Um, I draw alongside a tarot deck. I use this for my drumming deck. And this has been doing such a good job with all of that. Um, I will say that I don't get into the guidebook very often. I'm not exactly sure what all it says in there for all of the cards. Like, it's not like I've read through the whole thing. Um, because I don't feel like it. So that was Divine Nature Oracle. And I want to show that one forever because I feel like I show this deck a lot on this channel. All right, you know what? We'll just not count this one. Okay. This is the Priestess of Light Oracle. Um, it's mass market. So is a uh, Divine Nature. Okay, so here here comes another like weird shift that I had. Um, it was it was actually raining, but for some reason something struck me in that I realized. All right, you know when you see people that call themselves light workers. Um, that whole aesthetic that they, they tend to put with it, um, that shit irritates me and I don't really want anything to do with it. But as someone who has always, you know, worked with darker aspects of everything, approached everything, you know, just in, in like a shadowy kind of way, um, I've never been one really into the idea of light until all of a sudden it just struck me out of nowhere that my version of light doesn't have to look the same way as, like, these people's stuff. Light can be, you know, the the vision that... all Okay, not, like, a vision, but, like, the thing that I ultimately thought of was people sitting around a fire. That's light. Fucking so is a wildfire. Or the sun, you know, and it's, I don't know, man, I, <laughs> words aren't doing it, but I realized that light is an equal and opposite thing to the dark with depth and just the possibility of real growth, um, in a way that I don't really see represented ever. Anytime I see somebody's like, oh, I walk a path of light, I'm a light worker, blah, blah, I hate that shit, okay? So, it's really weird for me to even be talking about this because it just felt so different to me. It felt very natural and not like, you know, healing light beaming down from the fucking cosmos or some shit. And so I feel like this deck that I've had, I've had this for a couple years, Priestess of Light. Um, th this deck kind of felt the way that I felt. I colored these edges. So, um, I did sort of curate this deck. I pulled out some that I hated. But something about this, so this, this deck, it's, the artwork for it is interesting. Um, I don't remember who it was. Kimberly Weber, Sandra, and I think Kimberly Weber, um, had actually used crushed, like, gemstones and things in the paint for this deck, which is really interesting. Um, yeah. I just, I think that's super cool. Like, it's not, like, metallic or anything on the card, but, like, I'm sure that the real, the real paintings would be. But where I've had this deck, and I've never really felt drawn to use it, when I had that weird moment of understanding all of a sudden, um, this, this is the closest thing I can think of, um, to the way that it felt. You know, it's, there's animals, there's still, I mean, we got the night sky back here. Um, there's a lot of nature, there's trees and plants and green. This lady's got antlers, which I fucking love. So, I don't know, man, that, that whole situation probably needs its own video because I have a lot of, like, thoughts about it. <laughs> I kind of want to pull this card out. It kind of, I don't like it very much. But, yeah, so I will be working with this. Um, I have been working with it with uh, for a little bit. See, like, healing Earth, I, I'm one bitch sitting out here. I'm not going to be able to just beam light and heal the Earth. Like, I just don't think 
that that's a possible thing. I know that some people are really like into that working. I like the artwork for this card, but I don't like that. Power to give and receive healing. See, I'm okay with that, but the healing earth part is weird to me. I, I don't know, man. I'm in a weird place where I'm not really sure where to go from here after I've had some weird little revelation, okay? <laughs> I've had a revelation. So anyway, looks like Isis to me. Um, yeah, that was the Priestess of Light Oracle. And a short little thing about the weird, another weird thing that I've had happen to me lately. So, all right, that's enough of the story times. All right. Next deck is the Somnia Tarot. Is this a particularly summary deck? No. In fact, I might even sort of argue the opposite. But I don't give a shit because I got this last month for Mother's Day and I am fucking excited. Actually, it kind of has like a wintry feel, maybe, honestly, but... I know this deck isn't everyone's thing, but it's my thing. I also realized that I said the fucking dumbest thing. Um, I, I have another video where I was pairing decks with this one, and I was like, this deck doesn't have any animals in it as if these aren't fucking horses like <laughs> anyway moving on from that some of these i get lemony snicket kind of vibes from for some reason and then i think in the other video i also mentioned the mr bean vibes of the four of uh pentacles fuck four of something but the point is i try really hard not to think about that lemony snicket So I'm basically just looking at this deck myself now. Okay. So I will be working with the Somnia Tarot, even though it just doesn't feel really seasonal. Um, I don't know if... I, I tend... I feel to pick my deck seasonally, but this one might not have a season for me, because a lot of times I just keep, like, the creepier decks out all the time, because that's just the kind of person that I am. Okay, I've also got... Earth, Moon, and Shadow Oracle is going to stay out because I have been working with this and I've been, I guess we'll let me take this part out, um, and I have been really enjoying it. Also, uh, the same creators of this deck um, are going to be coming out at some point next year, 2024, um, with a tarot deck that's similar to this, so... Uh, I believe it's going to be a Kickstarter, and I will be backing that when it comes up. I don't remember what it's called, but the name is, like, announced. It's on the Rue and Vervain um, Instagram page. I mean, we're I think we're still a ways out from it, but I don't care. I'm excited. This deck has been my daily draw deck for a while, which is kind of... <laughs> Can give you some harsh shit sometimes, but God, I love this card. I want like a print of it to hang. All right, that was Earth, Moon, and Shadow Oracle. Put her away. All right, now we're down to two decks that are like my trusty, trusty summertime decks since, um, the summer solstice comes during the month of June. This is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. This deck, okay, I've heard people mentioning that this deck might be coming out um, in like, this This was Hay House, I believe. Um, so it's mass market and stuff, but that they might, it might be coming out in like, I don't know if it's a new edition necessarily, but just with some smaller cardstock or something. I don't know. It, maybe it's just a rumor, but if it is, I would really like that because this deck is fucking humongous. Um, for me, it's, it's kind of unmanageable. Um, it falls kind of in the same category as like the Mary L tarot for me in that, I have to shuffle it, like, this way, and I, that just pisses me off. I end up dropping cards and stuff, so <laughs> if they did come out with a smaller 
I don't know. Then I might be bitching that the artwork is too small. So I don't know. I don't know. I love this card. So this is, um, if you haven't seen this deck or heard about it, this is the deck that has the major arcana swapped. Like it's flipped over. So instead of starting with the fool, um, it starts with the world. In fact, I think we passed that card before. And um, rather than, you know, sort of not necessarily ascending, but moving through the major arcana and like gaining more, this deck is really more about putting down and returning. So the, the final card is the fool and it's just like this lady by herself walking through a field and she's like put down all of this stuff, um, which I really appreciate. Um, so like, okay, I don't know what card this you know, this, okay, I, I spent a while trying to, like, memorize which card was, like, what in, like, a regular tarot deck, but I've realized that that's not helpful to me, like, it, Ancestor is, I, I just take it as it is, you know, so I, some people hate this deck, some people love this deck, I am firmly in the loving this deck camp. I think it's a good idea, I enjoy the artwork. Um, something about it, I know that there's, um, well, are there any snowy cards? I don't know. There, there are, like, this is the tower. There's just a lot of summery energy in here for me. It's very green. It's very earthy. Um, this deck feels like summer feels to me. And, like, okay, yeah, there's wolves and snow, but you know what? I don't care. It's still summer. So, I've got this deck, and then, um, I like to pair it with another deck I've had for several years. This is a deck I can never remember the name of. The Roots and Wings Oracle. I have the mini edition. Um, this is an indie deck. I got like the rose petal finish, which is kind of sticky, but I don't mind it when it, when the cards are like small enough for me to like manhandle, <laughs> to force them to do what I want. So this deck, it, it doesn't, I, I usually get it out in the spring, but I just wasn't feeling it earlier. It's got some cards that are like major arcana. There's magician, there's strength, there's several in here. Um, just because I think the, the watercolors feel kind of, I don't know, fresh and springy, but I wasn't feeling it. So I ended up uh, letting it sit until now. I was like, hey man, I need to pull this shit out. Love this guy. So I pair these bitches together because, yeah. It's kind of weird, though. It feels weird to have, like... I guess I could zoom in a little here. Um, the tarot deck be the big, huge one, and the oracle to be the small one, but... They just work really well together, I think. Um, these cards tend to have, like, a lot going on in them. Um, not just artistically, but also in the guidebook. Whereas uh, this deck does not have a guidebook. It just has, like, a little fold-out page um, that has a couple keywords. So it kind of helps me, you know, put into place what all this deck is saying to me by looking at this. Okay, this is, this is my one fucking problem with this deck, is I hate that the death card has been called Rebirth. Ugh. <laughs> Burn it. Okay, so I guess, um, that was my stuff. I don't know why I'm just sitting here looking at these cards. Um, I also did want to mention, it is summer, and my kids, I have three of them, are home for their summer break, and, um, it my videos are going to be probably coming less often. I was having, you know, two or three a week. It's probably going to be maybe one a week. Um, unless I can figure something out, you know, specifically to uh, 
get some more time with quiet, but my son's got baseball. I'm having to take the kid to practice and games and just kids never, they just, even if they're watching TV, it's loud, you know? So my videos might be a little less frequent here for the next couple months, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm on here. I'm having fun making these videos. So, all right. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say. So thanks for watching. Bye.